On the trail of the pirates stealing noiselessly down the warpath, which is not visible to inexperienced eyes, come the redskins, every one of them with his eyes peeled. They carry tomahawks and knives, and their naked bodies gleam with paint and oil. Strung around them are scalps, of boys as well as of pirates, for these are the Piccaninny tribe, and not to be confused with the softer-hearted Delawares or the Hurons. In the van, on all fours, is great big little panther, a brave of so many scalps that in his present position they somewhat impede his progress. Bringing up the rear, the place of greatest danger comes Tiger Lily, proudly erect, a princess in her own right. She is the most beautiful of dusky Dianas and the belle of the Piccaninnies, coquettish, cold, and amorous by turns. There is not one brave who would not have the wayward thing to wife, but she staves off the altar with a hatchet. Observe how they pass over fallen twigs without making the slightest noise. The only sound to be heard is their somewhat heavy breathing. The fact is that they are all a little fat just now after the heavy gorging, but in time they will work this off. For the moment, however, it constitutes their chief danger. The redskins disappear as they have come, like shadows, and soon their place is taken by the beasts, a great and motley procession, lions, tigers, bears, and the innumerable smaller savage things that flee from them. For every kind of beast, and more particularly, all the man-eaters live cheek by jowl on the favored island. Their tongues are hanging out. They are hungry tonight. When they have passed comes the last figure of all, a gigantic crocodile. We shall see for whom she is looking presently. The crocodile passes, but soon the boys appear again, for the procession must continue indefinitely until one of the parties stops or changes its pace. Then quickly they will be on top of each other. All are keeping a sharp lookout in front, but none suspects that the danger may be creeping up from behind. This shows how real the island was. The first to fall out of the moving circle was the boys. They flung themselves down on the sward, close to their underground home. I do wish Peter would come back, every one of them said nervously, though in height and still more in breadth, they were all larger than their captain. I am the only one who is not afraid of the pirates, slightly said, in the tone that prevented his being a general favorite. But perhaps some distant sound disturbed him, for he added hastily, But I wish he would come back and tell us whether he has heard anything more about Cinderella. They talked of Cinderella, and Tootles was confident that his mother must have been very like her. It was only in Peter's absence that they could speak of mothers, the subject being forbidden by him as silly. All I remember about my mother... Nibs told them, is that she often said to my father, Oh, how I wish I had a checkbook of my own. I don't know what a checkbook is, but I should just love to give my mother one. While they talked, they heard a distant sound. You or I, not being wild things of the woods, would have heard nothing, but they heard it, and it was the grim song. Yo ho, yo ho, the pirate life, the flag of skull and bones. A merry hour, a hemp and rope, and hey for Davy Jones. <laughs>